This is question two, part B, C and D of the extended response. And in part A, we were working with this parabola here, which we defined as the function f of x on our CAS. So we're given a new function here in terms of y, and that's describing this road here for the bridge. So as soon as you see a new function, it's a good idea to define it on your CAS calculator. So we have the previously defined f of x. Let's define y of x. So menu 1, 1, y of x equals x cubed divided by 2, 5, 6, 0, 0 minus 3 times x divided by 16 plus 35. And let's make sure that's come out right. Yep, those two match. Now, what the question is asking is for the maximum downward slope of the road. So where across here is the gradient most negative. Looking up here, we're told the gradient is zero here and here. We want to know where the gradient is most negative and the value of that gradient is what we're looking to find. So it looks like it occurs when x equals zero, but we can't assume. So the best thing to do here would be to take a derivative. Let's take the derivative of this function. So we're looking for dy dx. Well, there's a very easy way to do that. We can define the derivative. A nice convention to use is to put a d out the front of the function that you're finding the derivative of. It just makes things a little easier if you have a convention. And then shift minus brings up the derivative operator and we're finding the derivative of y of x. Great, so that's defined. Let's have a look at what that function looks like. It's 3x squared on 25600 minus 3 sixteenths. So let's write that down. 3x squared on 25600 minus 3 sixteenths. And you could have done that by hand as well. So this is our gradient function. And we want to know when this is most negative. You could sketch it on your calculator to visualize it. But you should notice that this is going to be some kind of positive parabola shifted down 3 sixteenths. So it's going to look something like that. So where this quantity is most negative is right here at that turning point. And that turning point occurs when x equals 0. So by looking at the graph, you can reason that the maximum downward slope or maximum steepness occurs at x equals 0. So we know when it occurs, what we need to do now is actually find that slope. And that means subbing this value back into the derivative function. So let's evaluate the derivative function when x equals 0. Well, looking here, if we sub in x is 0, we get 3 times 0 squared on 2, 5, 6, 0, 0 minus 3 sixteenths. That disappears. And our maximum downward slope is negative 3 on 16. And we've given the answer in the correct form. We've got a negative out the front and two positive integers.
and that's our maximum downward slope. For part C, we're talking about the two vertical col columns here, M to N and P to Q. And we need to find the coordinates of M. So we're interested in these coordinates to two decimal places. We're given one extra bit of information. We know that this occurs this point M occurs when we have the maximum distance, the maximum vertical distance between the parabolic support and the road. So to work this out, we need to make a function for the distance between these two points. Let's call that D. So the distance between the two is f of x minus y of x and because we've defined these on our CAS it makes it much easier to state that distance function so let's do that let's define menu 1 1 let's define d of x as equaling f of x minus y of x. Great, that's already done for us. Now we can write down what this distance function is. Okay, let's copy that down onto our page. So we know that that distance is given by this function. Good idea to write it down. It might be worth a mark just in case you slip up. It just shows that you understand that there's an expression for the distance between those two points. So you can see, because if we subtract this bottom curve from the top curve, we get a distance anywhere along here. So this function tells us the distance anywhere along here, depending on the x value. But we want to find the maximum distance. Well, that means finding the derivative here, which we can call dd dx, and we need to solve that derivative when it equals zero. So we need to find dd dx, and we need to solve it for when it equals zero. So we can just write solve dd dx equals zero. Let's do that here. Let's solve, we'll go menu, three, one. We want to solve the derivative Oh, that one's glitched. Let's try again. Sometimes these simulators play up. So let's define those functions again. Calculate. We had the first one, which was the parabola, which was f of x equals 60 minus 3 on 80 times x squared. And we have y of x equals x cubed divided by 25600 zero, zero, minus 3 times x over 16 plus 35. There we are. Right, now we need to get that distance function, which was the difference between the two. So let's define that. So that function is d of x equals f of x minus y of x and we need to solve for when that derivative equals zero to find the maximum so we're going to solve for when the derivative yeah the derivative of d of x 
equals zero. Now that's going to give us an x value. Okay, we get two x values. So which one do we consider? Well, negative 40 times some quantity that's positive and bigger than one is going to be outside our domain. So this would be the quantity we're concerned with. This x equals 40 times root 65 minus 8. It wants it to two decimal places, the final answer. So let's just get that as a decimal. And there we are. Look, that's way too negative. That's outside the domain. Get this to as many decimal points as you can until you have to round at the end. It's good practice. So copy that down. That means that x equals 2.4903099931, blah, blah, blah. It's good to include as many decimal places as you can when you're doing your calculations on your calculator to make sure you don't get rounding errors. So that's the x value where m occurs. Now, a trap for young players might be to sub that x value back into the distance to find that distance. He hasn't asked for that. It's asked for the coordinates of m. So we need to sub that x value back into y of x. So there's x, and we need to find y of 2.49030, blah, blah, blah. And we need to find that value as well. So what we can do is we can we can use that up there if we like. That would be a good idea. Put the exact value in. That's definitely going to give us what we need, exactly what we need. Root 65 minus 8. And what do we get? We get some third. Let's get it as a decimal. 34.5337. Something, something, something. Now we're ready to answer our question. We need to answer to two decimal places. So let's do that very carefully. So we know that M is 2.49, comma, 34.53. And you would want to make it very clear that that's your final answer to avoid anyone looking at this and thinking you have the wrong number of decimal places. There's M. Okay, so we're told that this support beam PQ has its lowest point at negative UW. So we already know what U is. We're talking about negative UW. And now it wants us to find the length of each beam. Well, that's no worries because we already have a formula for the distance. So we just need to sub in the appropriate x value. So let's look at the beam MN. Well, we've got this distance function, which we define. So we want to find D of 2.49. And what does that equal? Well, we know that 2.49 is actually 40 times root 65 minus 8. So we can do something a little tricky here. Instead of y there, we're not interested in the y value. We define that function d. We want the distance. Let's get that. There we are, 25.23. So we can put that right down, 25. 0.23. Am I missing something? Are there units? Yes, there are. There are units. That's meters. The question at the start states everything is in meters. So we have 25.23. Now, how do we find the length of PQ? Well, it says PQ has its lowest point at negative U that x value. So to find pq, we want d of negative 2.49. And that equals 
Let's just grab that, put another set of brackets around it, and make it negative. No worries whatsoever. Make sure that's a decimal. 24.30. 24.30 meters. And those two answers are the lengths of the supporting columns.